So what does the perfect backlink look like for SEO? In this video, I'll share the anatomy of the perfect backlink. I'm Nathan Gotch, the founder of Gotch SEO Academy and the author of The SEO Entrepreneur. So like this video right now to show me you're excited to learn about backlinks and let's dive right in. So just follow this checklist that I'm about to go through and this will ensure that you're only getting the best backlinks for your website that actually will produce real SEO results, okay? There's a lot of backlink opportunities out there, but 80% or more won't actually move the needle for you. So just follow this process and you'll never get a bad backlink again. Okay, so number one, let's begin with relevance. So relevance, there's a few different components of relevance and it is the most important piece of this entire puzzle and that's why it's number one. So let's begin with the first year, which is topic relevance. So what does that mean? So when we're looking at a website, we wanna look at the overall relevance of the website compared to our website, okay? So we're looking at that link opportunity. We wanna make sure that that topic matches our topic, okay? And we're looking on a site-wide basis. So here's an example, okay? So you can see here that learningseo.io actually links to Gotch SEO, okay? And this is a perfect example of, you know, an apples to apples type of relevance. This is 100% relevant to my website and I'm 100% relevant to this website. This is perfect relevance. We wanna be looking at the site as a whole. Do they, do they talk specifically about your topic? And if they do, that's gonna be your best opportunity. You're gonna to wanna to assign uh, that a higher priority, okay? So we're looking at, at the entire website as a whole to really get that pure relevance, okay? Now, here's another example where we don't have pure relevance and it's completely off. This site actually does link to Gotch SEO. It looks like my site ended up in some scraper-based website, but you can see this is not what we want, right? This is a completely off-the-wall type of relevance and this is not going to benefit our website really at all, okay? It's really not gonna be good and we shouldn't waste our time with anything that's this irrelevant, okay? Now, keep in mind, you don't have to have pure relevance like this. Like this is a 100% match, but like let's say it was a digital marketing blog, that's also relevant, right? So we're still staying in this general relevance, but this is a matter of how we're gonna prioritize these opportunities. And the more relevant it is, along with a lot of the other metrics I'll be showing you, that should just go higher up on your priority list, right? So this is just a matter of priorities, okay? All right, another one here is not just looking at the site-wide relevance, but also looking at the page level relevance. And keep in mind, I'm talking about a perfect backlink here. So a perfect backlink here is we have a website that's talking about Google EEAT in an article, and they're linking to my article that's about Google EEAT as well, okay? That's a perfect, perfect match, right? And that's ideal, so you would have hyper hyper relevance on the domain level and the site wide level and then you have hyper hyper relevance on the the content level okay that's really what we should try to aim for now of course that's not always going to be possible for example if this is an article about seo or link building or anything else that's within the general topic it would still be very valuable to get a link from that right but this perfect match like this is going to be the most impactful all right Next is looking at location relevance. So we know that topic relevance is really important, but also location relevance. A lot of people underestimate how important this is, and it's a little bit more nuanced than topics. So topics are easy because it's, if you have a website about plumbers, you wanna try to get links from other websites about plumbers, okay? Pretty simple. But let's say you have a, a localized business and let's say I have my St. Louis SEO company and I offer SEO services to St. Louis businesses, well, me getting links from other St. Louis websites is a good thing, especially entities that are highly trusted. So for example, take a look at this one. This is the uh, KSDK website in St. Louis, and I have a link right here that's going to my website, all right? And this is a very trusted entity in St. Louis linking to my St. Louis business, all right? So these are very good citations. These are very good entities that you want linking to you. And that's really what we're thinking about here is, how can we get more trusted entities to link to our to our website, right? That's what we're trying to do. So whether that's gonna be on the, you know, the topic level or whether that's gonna be on the location level, both are gonna be really, really important, okay? They're both beneficial. Next is keywords, okay? So how relevant are the keywords of the website that's linking to you. So for example, yeah, they might be relevant on the domain level, yeah, they might have relevant content, 
But we also want to see, do, do they actually rank for stuff that's relevant to what we're going after as well? Because what it means is they have relevant keywords, it means they have relevant traffic. And if there's relevant traffic, that means that we can start to ask this question, which is, can this website send me relevant referral traffic that converts? Right. This is the standard that you should live by when you're thinking about a link opportunity. Like, like don't think about it in terms of link building or you know manipulating Google or building up your site authority. Like, don't even think about that. Literally, just ask a simple question: Does this website actually send me relevant referral traffic that converts? Treat it as if it was a paid advertisement. Right. Like, if you were paying for an ad you would get really, really specific with your targeting. You wouldn't just target anything because you know it wouldn't convert, therefore you would just waste your money. But for some reason, in the case of link building, no one thinks like this. They just think about how can I get links from you know any site that's loosely relevant to me, but they don't ever consider like, am I actually gonna get anything from this? Am I actually gonna make more money from this link, right? So for example, you know, if I got a link from, uh, you know, from Moz, I know that that referral traffic coming to Gotcha SEO would be highly, highly relevant and it would have a high probability of converting, okay? So this is what we need to be thinking about as far as relevance. Like don't just look, at, like the metrics are way less as you'll see here, that's not even that important. What matters is how relevant is this traffic? Now keep in mind, when you only look at metrics, let's say you're, you're uh, qualifying your link opportunities based on organic traffic, well, Unfortunately, that can all be manipulated. Same with DR or all these other third-party metrics. Those can all be manipulated. So you gotta be really careful. You actually need to dig in, go into SEMrush, and actually look at the keywords that they're ranking for. If they're ranking for relevant keywords, then there's a high probability that it's gonna send relevant traffic to your website. It really is that simple, okay? Next one is looking at backlinks, okay? the quality and the relevance of the backlinks of your link opportunity is also critical, right? And you can actually go to SEMrush and they have a quick little authority score kind of metric you can look at and it will tell you, you know, if it's good and niche relevant, that's a good thing, you at a high level. But you also wanna dig into their link profile. So looking at this link profile, this is the Gotcha SEO link profile, and let's say you wanted to get a link from my site and I was a link opportunity, well, you'd see Neil Patel, Search Engine Journal, Search Engine LAN, that's really good, right? Because that means that my link profile is extremely relevant to any other SEO website, okay? So if you see that, that's a very good sign, but the opposite is true as well. If you don't see any relevant links in the link profile, uh, that's not something you should prioritize. So the next piece of a perfect backlink is quality, and there are five parts, but before we dive in, I wanna give a quick shout out to Ferry and the team from Search Intelligence who is sponsoring this video. They understand the importance of quality and will land you backlinks on some of the most trusted websites on the internet. And they do it in a very unique way, which doesn't actually require you to create any content at all. Instead, all you need is a subject matter expert and they'll pitch journalists on stories so you can get brand mentions and powerful backlinks. So go to search dash intelligence.co.uk or check the link below this video. Next is quality. All right, so we've got relevance in order. We know that we want to get, actually we'll go back and review here. So we want to know we want to get links from websites that are relevant to us, uh, either on the topic or location level. We want that website to have a good keyword profile or, or in other words, relevant traffic. And then we want it to have relevant backlinks, okay? If you just get these four things right, you'll probably be fine in most cases, but let's just add a couple extra layers to this since we are talking about the anatomy of a perfect backlink, okay? So the next one is UI and UX. Now, you don't hear people talk about this very often, but just from a purely subjective point of view, is the website actually good? Is it actually high quality, okay? Now, if we go back and look at one of the websites from earlier, you know, this learningseo.io, like this is clearly a very nice looking website. This is a legitimate website, very high quality. You can tell a lot of time has been put into a lot of effort um, and it's a good site, okay? It's very clear. You don't, it doesn't take rocket science to know that this is a good website. At a glance, you can tell it's a legitimate website, okay? At a glance on my website, you can tell mine's a legitimate website. I got an actual person that's on the homepage, right? So I'm clearly a legitimate person. So it, it, it doesn't take like excessive 
uh, investigation to know. You just can literally look at a glance. Now, we'll go to what I'm talking about here to give you a different example. So, you know, looking at this site, right? This site links to Gotcha SEO. I guess it acquired it naturally. But just look at what this site is. I mean, we've got we've got a crazy menu over here that's totally irrelevant uh, and, and very strange in many ways. Um, and then we've got a bunch of random stuff over here that they're linking out to. So stop smoking, uh, <laughs> losing weight, apple cider vinegar, you name it, okay? At a glance, in about one second, maybe even less than one second, you can tell that this is not a good opportunity, okay? It didn't take you reviewing the link profile and doing all that stuff. You could just look at it and say, this is not a good website. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not. Um, just from a subjective point of view, I don't think anyone would uh, would argue that this is a great looking website. And that's purely just from UI and UX. We haven't even talked about the content itself, right? So just look at the site itself and just use your use your opinion, use your subjective point of view and actually get serious about that. And this is a good elimination tactic, okay? Next is just looking at the content quality. Once again, people don't go to these levels. They're just doing real basic stuff. Oh, does the site have good DR and does the site have organic traffic? Okay, let's get it. But that's why so many people waste a fortune on backlinks because they don't think about any of these things uh, and they don't go any layers deeper as far as their, their prioritization qualification. So also look at the quality of the content. So when we look at this site, once again, this is someone who's selling this link opportunity. It's just, you can just tell it's a, a spammy website, right? There, it doesn't take, it doesn't take a, a lot of investigation, a lot of due diligence to see that this is just a spammy website with mediocre content or even low quality content, okay? This is not where you want your website to live. Think about it. You you have to think about where you, where you are associating your business and your website. And if you're associating it with sites like this, then you should not expect to A, get good rankings, uh, B, maintain those rankings, uh, and C, to ultimately keep your website safe from penalties, okay? Links are the number one variable for getting penalized. So they should, you should have this level of this type of checklist to confirm that you're getting the best links possible, okay? Next one here is guidelines, all right? So when we look at the New York Times, like they have a, very, they have a dedicated page that talks about, uh, and, and this is, I don't agree or disagree with New York Times or whatever it is, but I'm just saying as far as what they do is at least their attempts to be as transparent as possible, they have all of these things, right? There's a lot. They have a whole page dedicated to their ways of doing journalism, their editorial standards and all this stuff. Now we look to the right over here, you know, uh, not looking too good as far as uh, editorial guidelines, like right for us. That's about the extent of their editorial guidelines. So you fill this out and you can probably get a link for, you know, 30 to $50, right? Super cheap link that will probably do nothing for your performance, okay? So look for guidelines. That's what we need to do. Next one is looking at the outbound link quality. Another thing that a lot of people don't consider, but you need to look at what is this website linking out to? And if you see that they're linking out to gambling websites and adult websites, and then they're gonna sprinkle in your personal injury lawyer website in there, like that is not what you want. You want your website to live in a good neighborhood. So when you look at this, this is once again, the uh, Gotch SEO external link profile. And I'm talking about the websites that I link out to from my website, right? And let's say Gotch SEO is a link opportunity. You'd want to see stuff like this. Okay. He links out to Moz. He links out to search engine land, Ahrefs, you know, HubSpot, search engine journal, all highly relevant, trusted entities in my industry that I'm linking out to. You don't see any gambling websites. You don't see you know, anything sketchy in this link, in this external link profile, okay? So you want to examine what they're linking out to. And this is one way that Google can start to identify footprints for websites that are selling links because you start to see this kind of odd, you know, outbound link profile uh, that just doesn't really add up a whole lot. And it's linking to a lot of websites that are really low authority and not trusted, right? That's when you know, okay? Next is quality. All right, so we wanna look at the quality of the backlinks. So I mentioned before, we're looking at the relevance, so highly relevant links, 
but these are also highly trusted links. And when you look at the links in between, you know, we've got Neil Patel and Search Engine Journal and Search Engine Land all highly trusted and relevant, but we've also got, you know, this Publer.io, which is a trusted website, Logo.com, Rev.com, like these are trusted websites. So they may not be 100% relevant to our core topic, but they are extremely trusted. So that is also okay, all right? So now the most disturbing part of this presentation, which is when in doubt with a link opportunity, throw it out, okay? So I actually stole this from, uh, you know, whenever you're uh, questioning whether you should eat a particular meat, uh, if it smells bad, the, 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 the phrase is if it, you know, when in doubt, throw it out. So if it smells and you doubt that meat, just throw it out, don't eat it, right? Um, and it's the same with your link opportunities. If you doubt it, throw it out. There's so many opportunities. And the goal of link building is this is not a quantity game. You can, one, one really good link that abides by all of these standards that I'm giving you is so much more powerful than a thousand of these mediocre links. I'm telling you, it is so much more impactful, okay? So just a review here. We've got, we've got we'll go all the way back here. We've got relevance, uh, just a review. We've got relevance, which is the most critical part. We're keeping it highly relevant across multiple points, the topic, the traffic, and the relevance of the backlink profile. And then we'll go to quality and We've got a few key things. We want to make sure it's a good looking website. It's high quality. It's got good content. It's got editorial guidelines in place to prevent spam. Uh, it's got good outbound links. It's linking to relevant outbound, uh, linking, linking to relevant websites and high quality websites. And its link profile is high quality itself. Okay. Then when in doubt, throw it out if it is not good. All right. Last one here is actually based on performance. Actually, two more. Uh, number three here is performance. All right. So, now we can talk about the metrics, all right? So authority score, this is a SEMrush metric. You are only going to use these metrics when you've already tackled those first two points. Once you've tackled relevance and quality, now you can, you can introduce authority score, which is the overall strength of a website and its link profile. You can also introduce the total referring domains. How many, what is the quantity of websites that is linking to this site? And then lastly, organic traffic, organic search traffic to this website. These metrics should only be used to, to filter through your high quality opportunities because it does make sense to get links from high quality opportunities that also have high metrics because that's an indication that it's gonna be, it's gonna be very impactful, right? So you could technically have a website that's super relevant, uh, is high quality, but it's not super strong. Right? It may just not have a lot of links. It may not have a big link profile. It may not have a ton of organic traffic, and it may not have an, a, a strong authority score. doesn't mean it's a bad website. doesn't mean it's a link you shouldn't get. It just means that it shouldn't be at the top of your priority list because it's not going to move the needle as much as a website that has huge numbers on all of these. Right, That just makes perfect sense. So it's a matter of prioritization. It's not a matter of elimination because the other two variables should have eliminated all the junk and left you with that 20% of link opportunities that are really high quality. Then with that 20% of link opportunities, you're just going to use these metrics to filter through those good good opportunities. Okay, So a lot of people start with this and they neglect the other stuff. So you're going to do the opposite. You're going to start with, you know, with relevance and quality and then eventually get to this. Next one is ease. Okay. Very, very simple thing. But what you want to do is once you've prioritized based on performance, now you want to prioritize based on what is it actually going to take to get this link. Okay. So looking at the difficulty level, getting a link on the New York Times is much more challenging then getting a link on, let's say, a, a smaller blogger's website, okay? So you should consider that and consider what it's going to take to get that link from a time perspective, from a asset perspective, you might have to create a specific asset to land that link, and also the cost, okay? How much is it gonna cost you to get that link? And cost is not just financial, it's also time investment, okay? So those are really the four, the four ways that you can really go through your link opportunities and make sure you're only focusing on the best link opportunities. 